the climate change. Can you share some of the examples of the initiatives that have made significant impact in improving access to education? Did it require governments, CSOs, private sectors, communities to work together? Thank you so much and thanks for the privilege of being here um, and all of you for uh, your interest and passion and work that you all do. But thanks particularly to you uh, for the incredible work that you do to advance girls' education in a, in a very, very difficult context in the world. Um, my president of Sierra Leone, President Julius Madabio, was at the United Nations yesterday, and he was talking about inequality. He was talking about how unfair the world system is, how Sierra Leone, which is an, a small country on the west coast of Africa, uh, contributes very little to the climate crisis, uh, in the world, but we are on the receiving end of the brunt of the effects of the climate crisis. It's, a, it's an inherently unjust world, and yet we have to come and plead and ask why Minister of Environment and Climate Change is here, is going into meetings and saying we need investments in Sierra Leone. It, it just shows how, you know, the, the, the system is skewed against us. But I like that you asked me about girls' education. Because the same way the system is skewed against a poor country like Sierra Leone, that's how girls are also on the worst end of the bagging, either way you look at it. So before I took this job, as you said, my work focused on advancing girls' rights and girls' education particularly. We've all we've said that, and, and you know this too well, Yasmin, that girls are already living in a crisis you know, the crisis of having access to school, to food, to health, and the idea that in a society where resources are scarce, girls are forced essentially to use their bodies as credit card yep. to negotiate access to even the most basic things that they need to survive and thrive. But when you take that reality and add the climate crisis that is in our communities, especially in rural areas. And I know when we talk about the climate crisis, people talk about floods and you know cyclones or those big things. But for the girls that we interact with, that we work with, that are in our country, it's about what you were just saying, that the water source is dried up in our village. There's extreme rain. That means you can't really go to school. Teachers don't go to work in rural areas because of climate crisis, it was already difficult to have access to good teachers in rural areas in the first place. But this just makes it even worse. So you see the problem compounded every day. When we had the Ebola crisis in Sierra Leone, thousands of girls got pregnant. The last government that we had decided that it was the smart thing to do was to ban pregnant girls from going to school. Because too many girls were now pregnant because schools were closed down. So what's the solution, which is, I think, the heart of the question that you ask? A small country with very limited resources, Sierra Leone, five years ago, our president decided that the flagship initiative for our country is free quality education. He spends 22% of our national budget on education, 22%, one of the highest of any country in the world, um, and then adopts a policy of radical inclusion. A policy that, yes, when he started five years ago, he said no, he, he continued the policy and said pregnant girls can't go to school. But I was an activist. We all pushed him uh, and said, if you care about bridging this gap and advancing our country and transforming our country, you cannot leave anyone out, not least the thousands of girls who should lead this revolution and this transformation in our country. He changed his mind. And he adopted a policy called the Radical Inclusion Policy, which allows pregnant girls, not just pregnant girls to go to school, but removes barriers for girls with disability, th seeks to attract technology and innovation in enhancing education access in a country that's very rural, and as I said, that's dealing with a multiplicity of crisis. Now, that required, as you said, some private investments. The government shows really goodwill, a lot of our national budget. And by the way, even in the middle of the Ebola crisis, uh, of the uh, COVID crisis, when many countries, including some of our international partners, cut funding for education, our government, this small country in West Africa that was dealing with all these problems, has maintained 
the 22 percent investments in in education we have received some funding from international partners we are now beginning to attract private sector investment civil society communities are demanding education are coming to terms with the reality that education should be the driving force of what we do and i think that is the example of how you can transform i think you absolutely need civic engagement and civic participation which is why i'm excited by the work that global citizen does and to make sure as our president has done for the first time in two months ago he's now named the minister who's in the room for climate change and me as a minister for civic education so we are combining all of these things to lead to the kind of change we want to see not just for girls but for um, our country in Sierra Leone. thank you